Summary of Swami and Friends by R. K. Narayan A boy named Swami wakes up in the South Indian town of Malgadi on a Monday morning. He works quickly on his homework at his dad's desk in the family room. After that, he goes to mission school and is bored in most of his classes. Swami fails to get a good grade on his math homework, and then he has a fight with his strict Christian teacher, Mr. Ebenezer, in scripture class. Swami feels hurt when his teacher says that Hinduism is not important. The next day, he comes to school with a letter from his father to the mission school headmaster, complaining that the school does not accept boys who are not Christian. Swami tells the letter to his four best friends. There is Somu, the nice class monitor, Mani, the mean but lazy bully, Sankar, the smartest boy in the class, and a little boy named Samuel, who is known as the P and isn't very interesting except that he makes Swami laugh the most. Later that day, the headmaster scolds Ebenezer and tells Swami that he shouldn't tell his father about problems anymore. Instead, he says, the boys should talk to the headmaster about their problems. Swami and Mani talk about a friend named Rajam that they want to throw into the Saraya River that next evening as they sit by the water. Due to his lack of fear, cleverness, and wealth, Rajam is seen as a kind of foe to Mani at school. Shrikant's dad is also the police superintendent. Swami says that he backs Mani more than anyone else, and when they get back to school, he starts to help the two enemies get along. To find out who is stronger, they finally agree to fight on the side of the river. But when it's time to fight, Rajam tells them to forget about their differences and be friends instead, which Mani loves. Swami is happy about this turn of events too, because he has always admired Rajam. He is glad to be friends with both of these strong boys. The reader meets Swami's grandma, whom he calls Granny. In a small hallway, she lives with Swami's family. They feel safe and secure with her around. When Swami tells Granny about Rajam, she gets excited and tries to tell him about his own grandfather's great achievements, but Swami won't listen. Soon after, on a Saturday, Swami avoids his grandmother's requests to spend time with him and instead goes to Rajam's house with Mani. They are surprised by his fancy home, huge collection of toys, and the delicious food his cook makes. When Swami gets back to school, he sees his friends Somu, Sankar, and the P. They are mean to him, Mu though, and make jokes about a tale. Swami makes Somu tell him about their joke after school. It turns out that they called him Rajam's tail because they think Swami is too good for his old friends. The first shock of Swami's life is when his friends turned him down, and he thinks about how quickly people can change. He makes a paper boat at home and puts an ant on it. Then he watches as water fills the boat up and floats away. Over the course of the days, Swami's friends keep ignoring him, and school starts to hurt more and more. On a different Saturday, Swami is very excited because Rajam is coming to visit him. He nervously tells his dad, mom, grandpa, and cook how to make different things. The visit goes well, and Rajam's stories even make Granny like him more. When Swami goes to school again, his old friends make fun of him again, so he hits both the P and Sankar. After Somu and Mani join, the group goes outside. Swami tells Mani that the other three people call him Rajam's tail. There is a fight between Mani and Somu until the other boys get the teacher to stop it. Two more weeks pass, and Swami and Mani return to Rajam's home. This time, Swami tells them he has a treat for them. When they get there, they joke that they are a blind dog and a blind kitten to get Rajam to let them in. When they open their eyes, they see that Somu, Sankar, and the P are also there. Rajam feeds the group and then gives them all a speech about how important friendship is. He offers each of them a gift if they promise not to fight anymore. Each boy takes his gift one by one. It's been two days since Swami's mother got out of bed, and she looks very different to him. When Granny tells him he's going to have a brother, he doesn't care. Even when the baby is born, he tells the P that the baby is hardly anything. He is told by the P that the baby will grow up quickly. Swami and his friends only have two weeks until their April school tests. Swami's dad makes him study all the time, 
and all of his friends are also sad because they have to study so much. Swami only thinks his work is worth it when his father tells him nice things about it. Swami makes a list of the things he needs right before the test. He is let down that his wants were so few, so he makes a longer list and gives it to his father. His dad scolds him and won't give him money to buy materials. Instead, he tells him to use the things they have on their desk at home. Swami's last test is finally over. At first, he's worried that he finished faster than his friends and didn't write enough for one question. But as soon as his friends finish, he gets excited as they form a happy crowd to celebrate the end of school. The boys are having a good time as they break paper and ink bottles. Eventually, a school official comes and stops them. When Swami is not in school, he sees that Mani and Rajam are better friends than Somu, Sankar, and the P. He also wants a hoop to play with, so he gives some money to a coachman who says he'll get him one. Later, he finds out the coachman lied to him. Rajam comes up with a plan for Mani to get back at the coachman by kidnapping his son. However, the plan fails when the boy escapes and Mani and Swami's neighbors attack them to get them to leave. As the three friends sit on a road outside of town, they get angry and approach a young cartboy named Karapan. They scare him by saying they are the government police and then let him go. Soon after, even though school is over, Swami's father starts making him study again. Though Swami's father feels bad for him after a long day of work, he also takes him to his club in the evening. Swami enjoys the visit until he learns that the son of the coachman works at the club. He worries that the boy will hurt him more and more, and he doesn't trust his father to keep him safe. He can't calm down until they leave. When Swami and Mani meet in August, they are in the middle of a fight for Indian freedom. Swami and Mani are moved by the speakers and swear to support India against England and not by English goods. Swami even burns his cap when someone says it was made in another country. And the next day, Swami is worried because he didn't wear a cap to school. But when he gets there, there are protesters blocking the door. The group says that school is not going to happen because an Indian political worker is in jail, and Swami gets caught breaking windows and damaging property at both the mission school and the nearby board school. The protest eventually moves to a town square, where Swami sees Rajam's father telling his police officers to violently break up the crowd. This scares and shocks Swami. Later, his father feels sorry for the protesters but scolds Swami for losing his cap, telling him that it was always made in India. All of the students who took part in the protest are punished by the teacher the next day, and Swami storms out of class in a rage. Sometime after six weeks, Rajam finds Swami and tells him that he forgives him for being involved in politics and wants to start a cricket team with him. Swami has moved to the board school, and his friends from the mission school are no longer together. Somu was held back, Sankar moved away, and the P arrived late to school. Swami agrees to play cricket, and he and Rajam will be known as the MCC. They write a message to a sports goods company with Mani to order supplies. Even though the company writes back and asks for a deposit, the boys are still hopeful that their goods will come and start practicing with equipment they made themselves in the meantime. Swami quickly shows that he is a good bowler, and he gets the nickname Tate, which comes from the name of a great bowler. Swami finds that the workload at the board school is harder than what he is used to, and he also has to do drill routines every day after school. Rajam gets mad because Swami leaves school too late to make it to cricket practice on time. While his grandma was sick earlier that day, Swami didn't pay attention to her, but that night he starts to worry about her. He's glad to hear that she's okay, but she lets him down when she says she doesn't know what cricket is. But Swami chooses to teach her instead of scolding her. When Swami keeps being late to practice, Rajam chooses to talk to the headmaster of the board school and try to get him to let Swami leave school early. He doesn't care that Swami says no, he demands and takes Swami to the headmaster's office. The teacher doesn't listen to them, and Rajam gives up in the end. A cricket game between the MCC and another local team is planned, but Swami is still not able to get enough practice time. 
he chooses to try to get a pass from a doctor named Dr. Kasevin since there is only one week left until the match. Dr. Kasevin says Swami is fine, but he agrees to tell his boss that Swami should not have to go to drill practice. Swami is so happy that he skips drill practice every day to go to cricket. But by the end of the week, he finds that the doctor never talked to the director. The teacher says he will hit Swami with a cane, but Swami throws it out the window and runs away. He chooses to run away because he thinks his father will get mad if he lets him live at home without going to school. He goes to the mission school and sees Rajam to say goodbye. He then talks about how much he loved being a student there. Rajam, on the other hand, talks Swami into running away for a short time before playing in the game and then leaving for good. The story then shifts to Swami's father, who is looking for Swami by walking around town by himself late at night. The last time anyone saw Swami was hours ago. His parents and grandma are very worried, and his dad is also getting worried. When Swami's dad has checked everywhere else he can think of, he finally looks into the Sarayu to see if Swami is killed. He keeps walking along the train lines until he finds him. The story goes back to Swami, who is lost on a quiet road far from home. He thinks about how stupid it was to leave because of something so small, and he wants to be back with his family. He decides to go home, but he goes the wrong way by accident and gets lost. He gets so lost that he starts to see things and starts to feel like animals are attacking him. He passes out after having a dream that he wins the cricket match. The next morning, Swami is found in the road by a cart driver named Ranga. He is taken to the district forest office, where an officer named Mr. Nair helps him figure out who he is and where he comes from. Soon after, Swami's father takes him home with the help of Rajam's father. He is happy to party with his family until Mani comes and tells him that he missed the cricket game. Swami is upset because he thought the game was the next day. Mani also says that Rajam is very angry, so Swami decides to talk to Rajam the next day and make things right between them. After 10 days, Swami still hasn't talked to Rajam because he's afraid of how he'll respond. He did learn, though, that Rajam's dad has been moved and that the family is about to leave. Swami looks through his things to find a gift for Rajam to give him before he leaves. He finally decides on a book of fairy tales and plans to give it to Rajam at the train station in the morning. When Swami gets to the station, he feels scared and can't talk to Rajam. Rajam gets on the train without saying goodbye. Swami is scared and asks Mani for help. The two boys run next to the train and give Rajam the book. Rajam seems to talk to Swami, but it's hard to hear what he says because of the train noise. Swami isn't sure if Mani is telling the truth when he says that Rajam has his address and will write. About the author. R.K. Narayan was born into a middle-class family of Tamil Brahmins. He grew up in the city of Madras in South India. His grandma took care of him a lot, and many of the stories in Swami and friends are said to have come from her and her friends. At the time, writing wasn't a typical job for Indian guys, but his family supported his choice. Narayan also went against the norm by choosing to marry his own wife instead of getting married through a planned marriage. She died of typhoid fever in 1939, only five years after they got married. Narayan raised his daughter by himself and never got married again. Graham Greene, an English author who was Narayan's friend and guide, pushed for Swami and friends to be released. It was Narayan's first book. After that, Narayan wrote 15 books, a biography, and many essays and short stories. He also became an activist for causes like children's rights and the environment. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.